This is the first of several videos on exponential functions, primarily graphing exponential functions. First off, here's your definition of an exponential function, f of x equals a to the x. This is considered an exponential function because the base is a number and the exponent is a variable. This is exponential because the base is a number and the exponent is the variable. These have exponents in them, but they are not exponential equations because the base is a variable and the exponent is a number. So those are not exponential. These are exponential. This is what we're going to be dealing with in this video. To graph y equals 2 to the x or f of x equals 2 to the x, I'll use those two notations interchangeably. We're going to start by just doing the plain old t-chart. Put negative 1 in for x and you're looking at 2 to the negative 1. You should remember that a negative exponent creates a fraction. So this is just 1 over 2 to the first, which is 1 half. If we put 0 in here, this is 2 to the 0. Anything to the 0th power is 1. 2 to the first is simple, that's just 2. And 2 to the second, that's 2 squared, which is 4. This is your basic chart for 2 to the x. If we graph these on this graph here, we have negative 1 up a half, over 0 up 1, over 1 up 2, and over 2 up 4. Notice we are getting a curve that looks approximately like this. This is hard for me to get the curve on here correctly, but it goes something like this. It does not touch that axis like that. That was just, I have a hard time doing this. It runs a little bit more like this. This is your basic graph of 2 to the x. Let's take a look at 3 to the x doing the same steps and see what this looks like. This is 3 to the negative 1, which makes 1 third. 3 to the 0, which is 1. 3 to the 1, which is 3. And 3 squared, which is 9, which is going to go off my screen. So let's plot those. Negative 1 up a third, that's barely there. Over 0, up 1 over 1 up 3, and over 2 is up here somewhere, which I'm not even going to bother with. Let's see if I can do the little curve here, coming through here. That's, that's got too many dips, but I hope you get the idea here. You'll get a better idea when you look at this set of graphs. This is done using a graphing calculator. So f of x equals 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x. Hopefully you see some similarities there. One major similarity is that each of these graphs will cross the y-axis at 1. Each of these graphs has a horizontal asymptote right there. This graph comes down and does not cross that asymptote. They all have the same type of curve. The only difference is as this base gets higher, this rises more steeply and will approach this axis a little more quickly. So here are some generalities about these. For any curve in the form y equals a to the x where a is greater than 1, it is a continuous function. That means it doesn't stop here. It keeps on going. It only stops because, of course, the calculator screen runs out. The domain is the real numbers. Domain refers to your x values. Because it continues forever this way and forever that way, our domain is all real numbers. The range, though, is the positive numbers because this does not dip down below the axis. It doesn't touch the axis, therefore the range is all positive numbers. The x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. The y-intercept is 1, and it is an increasing function. What increasing refers to is it from left to right. What's it doing? It's getting higher. All of these, as we move left to right, it is getting higher. Let's take a look at y equals 2 to the negative x and do a chart on this. We're looking at 2 to the negative, negative 1. There's two negatives in a row. The first negative is because that's negative. The second negative is because we're plugging in negative 1. The two negatives there are going to go positive, and this just gives me 2. 2 to the negative 0, that's just kind of silly. That's still 2 to the 0, which is 1. But then 2 to the negative 1 creates the fraction 1 half. So what we're graphing is to the left 1 up 2, 0, 1 over 1 up a half. And you see what this curve does is it's going in the opposite direction. Here are all of the ones done with the graphing calculator to show you same idea, 2 to the negative x, 3 to the negative x, 4 to the negative x. Here's all the generalities about these kind of graphs. It is continuous. The domain is the real numbers. The range is all positive numbers. 
the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote, and the y-intercept is 1. All of this is the same stuff that was true on the other screen when we were just talking about a to the x. The only difference is this is a decreasing function. So from left to right, this function is decreasing. But everything else is the same as the other function. This next part is going to look at some basic transformations. You have already done transformations in a previous chapter. They weren't exponential functions, but they were other transformations. And the nice thing is those rules that you learned back then are the same rules. Notice I have three things graphed here with the graphing calculator. This green one right here is my basic 3 to the x. Then these other two are two different transformations. This right here, this red one, is right there. Now, what could I do with this green one to make it line up? Watch. Just take this, slide it up. That's where it was originally. Slide it up 1. Now, why would sliding it up 1 work? Because that says plus 1. This says 3 to the x minus 2. That would be to take this green one and just drop it down to, and it lines up right there. That's your basic vertical transformation. When you see a function in this format where all we've done is add something at the end or subtract something at the end, it is just a vertical translation. This was up 1. This one was down 2 to get it lined up. So basic idea, if you have an original function of a to the x, and you want to look at a to the x plus or minus b, here's the rule. If b is positive, then that graph is going to be moved up b units. If b is negative, you're going to move it down b units. So if I want to do this graph right here, now you have to start with your basic graph of 2 to the x. Where did this come from? I am using the chart that we've used several different times. So that's the green right here. Now physically, I can grab hold of that and just take this and move it down 1, 2, 3, and that's what my graph's going to end up looking like. Now you don't really have the luxury on your paper to grab hold of the whole curve and move it down. What you're going to need to do is move it point by point. So we had a point right here, move it down 1, 2, 3, and put a dot. Pick another good place. And what I mean by a good place is a place at a corner, one that's easy to count. Take that one down, one, two, three. Take this one down, three. Now, this one's not exactly at a corner, so I'm going to go down one, which lands me about there, down two, which is about there, down three, which is about there, which is going to give me this curve right in here. I'm not even going to connect the dots because it, it, this tool is just so hard for me to use, but you can see the curve right there. One thing that could help you is to realize that if this curve is dropping down 3, the horizontal asymptote is dropping down 3. So the horizontal asymptote is no longer the x-axis. I'm dropping it down 3, and then that sort of helps me see that this curve would do the same thing right here. Now I'm going to cheat and just grab hold of this, drop it down, and you can see what it looks like. If I want to do the same thing up here, this is 2 to the x plus 2. I'm going to grab hold of individual points. Take this point, go up 1, 2. Take this point and go up 1, 2. Now I'm off the graph a little bit, but you can estimate. Take this point, go up 2. So I'm in the middle here, up 1, up 2. Same thing I said a second ago. This horizontal asymptote is no longer the x-axis. It's going to go up 2. And then you can see, I'm going to cheat here and just grab hold of this. And now here's a different situation. Notice the change is up here in the exponent, not where it was before. The change is up with the exponent. So I have my 3 to the x, which is the blue right there. I want to do 3 to the x plus 1, which is the red. And then the black is 3 to the x minus 2. Physically, what I need to do to make this blue one line up over here with the red is that this got shifted over to the left one. So there's two things going on here. Because this is up here with the exponent, it is a horizontal shift. But notice it's going in the opposite direction of what you probably expected. Because it said plus one, you might have thought, oh, let's move to the right one, but it's not. It goes in the opposite direction. And the reason it goes in the opposite direction has to do with the t-chart, which I'm not going to draw out right now. This one right here, if I follow that same rule, this x minus 2, this is going to be shifted to the right 1, 2, and it lines up. So what this is telling me is this. If we are in this format, we've had a general exponential function of a to the x. 
if I'm now looking at a to the x plus or minus c, this is going to move the graph to the left or right, but in an opposite direction. If c is positive, if this says x plus c, you move left. If c is negative, meaning it says minus c here, you move to the right. So let's take a look at an example here. There's my 2 to the x. I look at this right here, this plus 3. This is up with the exponent, tells me it's a horizontal thing, and I need to go to the left 3. So I'm going to take hold of each of these points, like this point right here is going to go to the left 1, 2, 3. Take hold of this one, going to the left 1, 2, 3. Now I can try to maybe move this one to the left 3, over 1, 2, 3, lands about over here, and you can see that's what the curve looks like. I'm going to cheat and just slide this over, starting here, go 1, 2, 3, and there it is.